All right, this is the Veterans Commission meeting of Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Uh, it's a virtual meeting in accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 7B. And here's the chairperson, uh, Doug Shipman. All right, welcome everybody. And thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Uh, everything you said before Mary's statement is off the record, thankfully. So <laughs> it's good to see everybody. And uh, glad to have Ryan with us. and. Sandra, I see your name. I don't see your face, but great to have you with us as Thank well. You. Good evening. So uh, I did want to, uh, first on my, my notes, was to welcome our newest members. And uh, one is Frank, uh, who is newly reappointed, even though he's been serving diligently ever since then. So welcome, Frank. Thank you. And uh, welcome to Tricia, who is not with us right now, but was also appointed uh, as a member of the commission at the same time Frank was at the last uh, town council Excellent. meeting. So Excellent. Very happy about that. And Ryan Biggs is joining us. I appreciate Ryan's effort as a town council member in helping us get that done. <laughs> Much appreciated. So um, it occurs to me now, this is, I think is the first meeting we've ever had seven seats filled and one alternate. So what customarily needs to happen, I believe, and Mary, as our liaison, you can correct me, but we need to ensure that each of you who are here knows who is voting and who is not voting in the event that we have a vote. And I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six regular members. And Sandra, you are uh, an alternate. I think we had mistakenly listed you as a regular member in previous rosters, but you are actually, you were appointed as an alternate. But that for today's, is correct. Yeah, well, yes. our apologies for that. And, and so glad you're here anyway. Um, but for today's meeting, you are the seventh member. So you are entitled to vote. Um, and okay. uh, that's, that's my line and I'm sticking to it. So anyway, <laughs> welcome everybody. Um, I think it's time for public comments and we have a couple people, one person here from the public. Celia, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Um, you're our only member of the public, uh, unless of course, Ryan would like to say something. So if either of you have something to say, just unmute yourselves and please do. No, I'm just interested. I'm gonna listen and pass on to the library. Okay. What, what you and I'm just here for support. Great. You want us to support you or are you here to support us? Right now I'm supporting you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Much appreciated. You can tell I'm a little punchy. I haven't had dinner yet and I've had too much coffee today. So sorry about that. So um, very good then. The next thing is the minutes and everybody should have a copy of the minutes that came out with the agenda. Thanks to Mary and Helen. Um, do I have a motion to accept the minutes of February 10th, 2021? motion. Frank has moved a second. I Just second. Your... Thank you, Sandra. And Sandra seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Very good. Motion carries. The minutes are approved. Thank you very much, Helen, as always, for taking such good minutes. And then uh, letters and announcements. I think we do have some announcements or letters this time. So I'll turn it over to Chris and Mary. Chris, you want to start? Uh, uh, you know what? Mary, you go ahead. OK. I don't, really, um, I don't really have any announcements, just the emails that I forwarded you know, to, um, to the Veterans Commission about the COVID. Uh, vaccines okay. being available to everyone, mm -hmm. regardless of age. And I received a submission through the Veterans Commission comment form, which I thought the emails went to me, but they actually still go to Kathy Bagley and we're trying to, she just forwards oh. them over to me. Um, but there was a very interesting one that I will read to you from John Sand, who is a history teacher at the high school. Um, Hi, everyone. I know we haven't worked together since our D-Day com commemoration, but I wanted to reach out and share some information. 
Due to state changes in what students are required to learn, Wethersfield High School students are no longer mandated to take US history. I know that's hard to believe, but unless the town adds its own requirements, students will be allowed to graduate high school without learning US history. I'm hoping to engage you in further discussion about this matter since my attempts to work through the school system are falling on deaf ears. I am mortified that we are allowing this to happen. I have resigned my department head position in protest and I am looking for any help I can get so that we don't graduate students with no knowledge about their past or the sacrifice of those before them have made. I also thought it, uh, you as a group would want to know. Thank you, John Sam. Um, so that was the first. Uh, and then there was an additional. Um, There's a, a gentleman named Kyle McDonald, uh, who's a Weathers lifelong Weathersfield resident, um, veteran, and he saw the article about the Veterans Commission, and he did complete the survey last year. Um, he hadn't heard anything since then. I'm part of several veterans organizations, primarily the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, but nothing here in town. And he's just uh, interested in the commission. Additionally, um, Kathy Bagley received a phone call from an individual, and uh, this is actually on our uh, on the agenda for new action items number seven, from an individual who's interested in um, our support for creating a veterans, a service member support group or a support group for families of service members. She is actually, she was looking for something close by, uh, found nothing and is part of a group in Granby or East Granby. Um, so the, those are the three items that um, uh, were, were brought to my attention this month. Great. Thank you for those. And I feel like um, we should respond to each one of them um, at, in some way. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure what we need to do about each one of them. Uh, we, we did put the service members support group on the agenda to talk about. And uh, I think we should probably also discuss each of the other two uh, as well at the appropriate time. So let's... Uh, Let's get to the agenda and then we'll, we'll get to those three if we want to talk about what kind of a response we'd like to provide or, or action. So um, moving on to action items. The first one is commission vacancies and appointments. I think we've already addressed that. We still do have one vacancy in the alternate category. And uh, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts or suggestions on potential people to fill those roles? Uh, Mary, didn't the, uh, the one of the two, one or more, both of the writers that sent in emails uh, suggest that he might be interested in serving on the commission? He didn't say serving on the commission. He's just interested. Um, he wants to receive the newsletter. Uh, he potentially wanted to attend the meeting. I don't see him here. Um, and he wanted to donate to the commission's yep. mission. But I, I can contact him and see if, if he has any interest. Like a natural. Uh, um, I also had intended to go back through our list, which I, I did not get to this month, uh, to look at some of the people we had highlighted previously as as potential members and they were all people that had filled out the survey and, and listed themselves as interested so we should look at that again as well but uh, yeah it'd be great mary if you sure. whatever we decide to do with a response to him perhaps we can include a question about his interest in serving on the commission uh, to see okay good I don't think there's anything else we really need to cover on commission vacancies and appointments unless anybody else does. Yep, I see a lot of head shakes. Okay. Uh, budget and donations. So uh, I know that uh, 
that Mark Rudowitz had talked about having a donation and did he drop off some additional money to you, Mary? He did drop off an anonymous donation of $70 in cash that is nice. now in our account. Uh, so we are at $1,670 currently. That's a lot of money. It is. That's great. Okay. Um, also, uh, you should have received each of you a copy of the budget request. Uh, Mary included our $500 request in with the Parks and Rec budget request, which my guess is will not be funded, uh, but at least we requested it. So thank you, Mary. <laughs> you have to be have to be heard and seen every year, and maybe I, I one agree. day it'll happen. I, I agree, yeah. and uh, I think we can stretch the $1,670 quite well uh, with the newsletter plan that has been developed. So um, that, that's really great. And it's, it's great that people feel like it's a cause worthy of donating to. So, um, and Mary, just, uh, I had sent you, I think just before the last meeting, a letter template to send back to donors. Okay. Okay. I, will, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can look for that I'll, again. And I'll make sure I, okay. See, if, if you can't find it, let me know. But um, okay. the idea was that as these donations come in, you could just generate a letter automatically. You have the template and then you can just, you know, yeah, forge my absolutely. signature or, or something like that and, and send it out on behalf of the commission. I'll find a nice handwriting font for you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I think that'd be great. But, but every donor deserves to be thanked and recognized for their contribution. Okay. Is that tax deductible? I don't think we ever addressed that. Or is it consult, so. your own, consult your own uh, account? Yeah, yeah. It, we are not a, I mean, this, the, I don't think the town, right. a donation to the town is considered a, a charitable contribution. Sure. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Under the yeah, IRS laws. Uh -huh. yeah. I consider my taxes to be a charitable contribution. <laughs> Well, I consider right my... off your property taxes. So, <laughs> yeah. thank you very Pretty much extent. for centering me. Thank you. I, I used to know people that ran private, not mom and pop businesses, and they considered their mom and pop business a nonprofit organization <laughs> because they never made much money. <laughs> well, they're tongue in cheek, of course, but yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, let's move on to the implementation plan. I'm, I'm moving sort of quickly because we have a lot of great things to talk about tonight. Uh, it sounds like the newsletter is done. I'll turn it over to Frank and or Mary to talk about that. I have no, no comments. I'm just, I'm already thinking about the full newsletter. So Mary, go ahead. So I have uh, the assessor's database, um, a, a new one more than what I reported on last time. It's got over a thousand uh, addresses on it. Um, I have cross-referenced it with a couple of things that have been given to me and added probably probably about 20 more. Uh, then um, after Kyle's email to us, Doug forwarded me the results of the um, survey, the, the needs assessment survey, which had uh, some people also responded. So I'm now cross-referencing that so the labels are this close to being done. Uh, the copying is a quickie and the Transition Academy said that they would be the ones willing to stuff the envelope. So this should all happen next week. Wow, that's great. That's we great. decided on a color stock because I was concerned in one previous email about the, the box that was around the context was a shade, a 20% shade. I was concerned that depending on what color stock you, you select, you might not what I, what I ended up doing because of the, the copying um, tends to darken everything, Yeah, I took the shading out and just created a border, a thin border, uh, which you. will copy better. Yes, I mean, I, it, for, for it to be posted online, I suggest doing the shaded box yeah. and the color, and that looks really nice. But for copying purposes in black and white, I did remove the shading and um, put a, a border. Okay. A plus. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, thank you, Mary. You're, you're kind of putting all the pieces together, which 
I'm, I'm not sure that was really the intent, but I appreciate you doing it <laughs> for us. So. It's working. Yes, it's working great. I have a question, uh, maybe as much for Mary as anybody. You know, at one point we kind of talked about trying to develop an email listing for veterans. And some of those survey responses, they gave us an email address and not a street address. Um, is there, is it feasible to create an email database and just send the newsletter out electronically to some of those people? Or what do you think? Uh, that's, that's actually relatively easy to do because um, mm -hmm. you can copy those emails right into a a blind CC so that people won't get each other's, uh, it keeps your email address private and uh, and send that out if that's something you like. So people might get it twice um, right. if they provided both, but it, it's really, it's up to you guys if you'd that's like to pursue well, that. That's an interesting point because we've always talked about the challenge of an older generation which wants hard copy and a younger generation that likes email or doesn't you know, care. And it would it would save us costs in the future if people were able to opt in mm -hmm. for an email. I mean, if, if, if we can cut our costs by a significant amount if they just prefer to get it as an email. I'm not sure how we do the mechanics of that. I'm sorry? Uh, I'm not sure how we do the mechanics of uh, um. asking our veterans and their families, if they were interested in receiving it via email, you have to get the permission to do that, obviously. But I don't know how mechanically we would do that. I don't. I, I honestly don't know unless something in the newsletter was uh, requested that uh, if you want an e if you want if you'd like to receive email, send your email address to uh, you know veterans commission. Yeah. Okay. Bin item for the fall newsletter. There you go. Half, half written. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And um, I think if we do send out the newsletter electronically to, let's say we have three or four dozen emails all together and include the commission members on that email as well, and then we can encourage people to please share this newsletter with other veterans you may know. Um, and that way, it's easy to hit, you know, forward and send the email with the electronic newsletter off to somebody else and that way increase our coverage and then post it to the website electronically as well. At least it's, you know, there uh, for people to refer to. Well, which brings up, do, are we sending the newsletter or, or could we send the newsletter along electronically to our state reps? Do we want to do that? I mean, do we want to increase the distribution by uh, our, um, our various state reps and or other uh, political entities that might be interested in it or uh, someone at, in the VA who might be interested in what we're, we're doing? Expand the, uh, uh, like a false, mark, false force multiplier. Just, just a thought. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, uh, I think I would suggest at least the town council members should receive yep. a copy of the newsletter, yep. um, either electronically or in, in paper copy. And uh, it, it strikes me maybe that and town staff, you know, Mary and Chris should advise us who on the town staff should get it. You know, it, it's it's kind of an in town thing uh, for the for the most part. So I'm not sure if people outside of Weathersfield would really find it relevant, um, but uh, definitely uh, something for inside the town. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, again, I would suggest our state reps, uh, Amy Bellow has, uh, Maury has been just phenomenal in responding to uh, uh, emails that we've sent her, a response to every single one. And uh, you know, she was the mayor and you know, just a, to me, that's a good idea. I, uh, we get to, sure. uh, to our Senate representative yeah, yeah. And, uh, Ryan might have some thoughts on that as well. Uh, well, I would say you could send it to all the veterans that sit on town council. Yes, yeah. <laughs> all one, all one of you. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, I, I think that's a great idea, uh, Frank. I, I'm, I'm with you with that one.
The other thing that I did want to mention about the uh, addresses, uh, simply because I um, have been through the whole list several times already, is uh, there are names on that list who are not veterans. They are veteran survivors. Uh, my mom is on that list. So I don't know based on after, after it goes out, we may get some people who say, you know, take me off the list. Um, but I, I just wanted to put that out there that um, uh, I, I don't know how many, um, but I know I know of a couple. I know of somebody who know, has passed away. I don't know why they're still on the list. I think I think that's I think that's still a good idea for them to receive it. Um, okay. Just simply because you know a lot of the benefits and news that you're sharing, it's going to fall over to some of them as well. And then if they don't want it, then, you know, you can take them off the list. Okay. All right. No, I have, I'm, everybody's getting the spring newsletter. Everybody is getting the spring newsletter. And then we'll just see if there's any, um, any requests after that. And I'll, I'll just let you know if we, because the return address is going to be parks and recreation. So mm -hmm. we'll see if anybody has anything to say and I'll report back. That's great. Mary, do you think just, Reflecting back on town staff, you probably have an internal distribution process for town information from each department anyway. Uh, yeah. Can you just use that system to distribute it to the other town staff so they're aware of it? Uh, I will ask Kathy what she deems best because it could either go to department heads for mm -hmm. their uh, choice on uh, what to distributing um, or I can do all all town okay. hall, all police yeah. department, all community center. Um, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll have to ask her what she feels is best, but I can, I can definitely put an electronic copy out to all pertinent town staff. Yeah. Okay. Town manager. yeah. Oh, the town Absolutely. manager I have there with the, uh, with the town council. Okay. And then um, we had a conversation with the library director and the senior center director some time ago. And it seems like there are fewer places than there used to be who post these things. And Celia, you might be able to advise on the library, but it would be great if we could put a stack of them at the library and put a stack of them at the senior center also, just so that people who happen to go in there and see it could take a copy uh, home with them. Um, well, things have changed since the pandemic, of course. Um, we don't have as much out for people to take. We used to have a slot wall right. when you came in the door full of offerings, and that has disappeared. Um, on the other hand, if the numbers keep dropping, these are the kinds of things that can come back, perhaps, but I haven't heard Brooke actually speak to when that will happen. But we do have some things set out for um, and near the door. For in, in, in piles for patrons to take as they come in. The rare reminders there every week and the town calendar is there now. So um, I, I, would, I would be a booster for surely the, the, your, your newsletter to go out. Um, I can speak to Brooke about that. She's away this week, but I can speak to her when she comes back. And um, if uh, th this would be something that you, if she's, she's a department head, so she would get it via uh, email and then it's just a matter of maybe printing up a bunch and stapling mm -hmm. them and putting them by the door. However, she chooses to do that. She'll have to decide that. Okay. Um, I, it might be a good, once it's published, it might be a good opportunity for me to follow up with them because we That's really great. haven't since our meeting and I can just say, hey, our new newsletter's out. Do you have any opportunities to distribute it through oh. your respective facilities? Okay. Um, that would be good too. The senior center is still not hosting anything in person. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the governor, uh, I, I think the state regulations are pushing towards September as a possible opening for senior centers. Uh, with more people getting vaccinated, that might be earlier. Um, but they're looking, the town itself is actually looking to start the one on one services, which is like legal service, foot care. Um, but still all group exercise and things like that are still virtual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm having a meeting here next month at the senior center with the Sons of Italy. 
that's actually a community center meeting. The community center is open for rent um, uh, right. with the regulation. Yeah, but it's oh, uh, the, the community center and the senior center are, are actually different things. And the senior center is Amy Miller and her programming, um, which uh, based on the age and issues, um, complications of COVID, they're not having their programs in person. But the community <laughs> center with the governor's new relaxation of some of the rules uh, is seeing more and more people having events that are can be larger. So yes, you the Sons of Italy, there's a whole bunch that are going to start coming back next month. Very cool. Well, I think we have a great newsletter. It's a, a great first edition, and we want to make good distribution on it. Uh, so anybody else has thoughts, uh, you know, like town council and state reps or, or other key people, um, you know, hit, uh, re hit reply all on the email and send it to uh, the group, and we'll see what we can do about getting it done. So is it great. possible uh, for us to get like an electronic? Hi, it's Trish. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. We got you, I, Trish. I just got off work. Sorry about that. Um, welcome, was, welcome aboard, by the way. <laughs> thank you very much. Can we get an electronic link of that um, newsletter? And then, um, like, the Facebook, what's going on in Wethersfield, like, we could post that link so people could ha actually access it electronically. You, you are a mind reader. Um, we, we don't want to distribute it electronically until it's published in paper format, just so we don't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but um, my very next item under the same heading is Facebook page. Uh, we talked about having social media presence. I'm sure the town has some guidelines about what we can and cannot do. Uh, but I've seen so many postings from Chris, for example, in the past two weeks about uh, getting shots and all this other stuff that needs to go out through social media. That is the best way to get that information out to our audience. Um, everybody's using Facebook as a public information distribution arm. So I think we need to really look at Facebook and social media uh, opportunities. So uh, now that I've said that, Mary, you're going to tell me why we can't do that, but um, please tell us what you think is the, what, what's the town policy on all that? Uh, the town has a couple of Facebook pages that are specific to the town and they are governed through our IT department. I say governed as a, a general term, but mm -hmm. um, so, so there are things you can do. We use the Parks and Rec Department does post some things on there, everything from our fishing derby to, you know, the, um, there was a hugs 5k that had benefited camperships that was run through the social news, uh, social news services department. What's nice about being able to put it out there. And I will have to ask Kathy if we can put veterans commission things on there is they are picked up. Those posts are picked up by, uh, like what Trisha said, what's happening in Weathersfield, what's mm -hmm. going on in Weathersfield. Uh, the Youth Advisory Board page, Colleen um, Keene picks us. She's, she's part of a lot of different groups and she will pick up our posts and she will repost on these various things so that everybody knows what the Park and Rec Department is doing. And I see what, you, what you're saying, Doug, is all you need is one of those to pick it up and repost it for you to, to do that sharing and then it gets the information out there. The Veterans Commission to have their own Facebook page um, would require somebody who's uh, going to be the admin for that page. And it, mm -hmm. you know, because if things get posted to your page and they're not appropriate, uh, it goes, you have to go through the IT department to block it. it. It's not as simple as just starting one up yourself as an individual. Um, as a commission, I'm not sure if we have to follow those rules, but I will need to have some guidance on that. Okay. If you want to, if you want me to look at the commission having their own Facebook page, and then I would also need to know who's going to be the admin. Right. 
Right. And uh, uh, a couple of points in there. One, I would love for you to research with whoever is appropriate. Two things. One, you know, if, if we can start sending things to the town's Facebook page to go out through that venue initially, I think that's a great interim step or maybe it is the final step. I don't know if it's already set up and it's operating. Um, and then it would really end up being probably Mary, you and Chris would be the ones mostly sending things to the, the IT department to post to the Facebook page, unless they gave you permissions to put things up there. But all these announcements about COVID vaccinations for veterans, it, it's going to us, but it's not going any farther than that. So it really needs to get out, you know, that kind of stuff out through some broader distribution process. So that's one thing is finding out what we can do with the town's existing Facebook page. And then the other thing is, is the, you know, can we set up our own? Um, but uh, I agree strongly, uh, we really can't initiate something unless we're going to have process owners here on the commission. So Frank is the process owner for the newsletter. Uh, when Frank leaves the commission, we will get another person and they will be recruited or they will be assigned to be the newsletter person. So we will always have to have a newsletter person. Um, we will always have, you know, a secretary. Uh, we'll always have to have a Facebook person if, if that, if it goes that way. So, um, you know, Tricia, I don't know, I know you were in some of those early conversations we had about uh, social media and, and Frank and, and Jennifer, you're all kind of part of that communications team. If somebody would like to be sort of the, the social media person, I think that'd be fabulous. I don't mind, this is Trish again. I don't, really, I don't mind being part of the social media thing because I'm pretty active on like many platforms. So. Okay. Well, maybe if, if Mary, you can find out a little bit at the next, you know, before our next meeting and, and share it back with us, then we can okay. decide what, what course we'll take. Hate to put it back on you, but, you know, I mean, I'm happy to contact Gary Evans, but uh, he'd probably rather not have me do that. <laughs> no, no. And, and he'd have to ask Derek and Derek would have to get back to me. So if I asked Derek. Right. Yeah. The middle right. man right out of there. So wonderful. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, but, uh, Trish, yeah. You know, it, it, we have a communications committee. You know, and I get as as Doug correctly said. You know, I do the newsletter, and I am not interested in doing social media. I just not what I'm good at. So you would have other people to rely on as well, not just yourself. Yep. Uh, I think uh, Mary's point is there needs to be there'll be one. One person who will be the designated person in the system for for running the Facebook page. So um, we need to have a, a pretty firm commitment from somebody to do that, who can actually monitor it and update things on a weekly basis or, or daily basis. Quite frankly, because the information flows that quickly. Um, you know, it, it, in my very small museum, I have one guy, and he's the Facebook guy, and he puts a Facebook fresh post up every day. It requires work and research um, and that's his job. It's not his only job, but it's you know yeah. one of his many additional duties. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, we'd kind of have to have that level of commitment from somebody uh, and it probably can't just be a group. It needs to be one person who says, yep, I'll take, I'll be Facebook captain or whatever. Yeah. So something for everybody to think about. I know it won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> I barely look at my own Facebook page. Um, okay, good. Trisha, thank you for uh, mentioning that. That was an excellent, excellent segue. Um, I think that's enough on implementation for now. And uh, let's just shift over to Memorial Day ceremony. Any, I know we have a committee meeting right after this, so we don't need to cover everything twice, but uh, are there any highlights that Mary or Rick would like to provide? Uh, I have uh, the two flags that I ordered I have, and I talked with Ryan, and Danny's flag went to his house, uh, and it was supposed to go to Ryan's, but I guess they sent it to Danny, and he's going to try to get in touch with uh, Tony to see if we can present him that flag on Memorial Day. Great. 
Okay. And um, I think I shared last month that uh, the we are much smaller, but we are going to be able to do the um, essay contest at the middle school and the, um, uh, the planning committee did uh, okay rather than a savings bond as the um, prize to do a gift certificate um, to something like Amazon, which would be highly appreciated. And uh, I think in this day and age, uh, pardon my dog. Um, I really think that's, that's pretty much it today. We're gonna to be looking at finalizing our program. Um, uh, yeah, does anybody have any questions? All right, that's it. No, I think, you know, I, the, the number of general public that can show up will be dictated in some ways by the governor's uh, policies at that time, which could be changing dramatically in the next couple of months from what it sounds like. So yeah. we'll, we'll see where that, where that goes. But again, you know, with a Facebook page, um, <laughs> we could really put out some great information about this event right. and, and future events. All right. Uh, Chris, do you have any updates on uh, veterans needs that you have been serving over the past month? I'm um, just, um, thank you very much. Just wanted to mention that, you know, that, uh, we continue to assist uh, veterans with the food bank gift cards to local restaurants, uh, the CRT energy assistance program, tax relief program for homeowners and various other programs. Uh, we did get um, a couple calls from veterans from the fantastic uh, article in the Weathersfield Life. And, uh, vet, you know, several veterans called about services and also the tax relief program. Great. Good, good. Excellent. Did, did we get any complaints about the article? No, no complaints. <laughs> good. Just good things. Good. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a little, I'll just say I'm a little nervous about the article, which I've heard a lot of great compliments as well uh, about it as well. And, and Frank, thank you for, for coordinating all that. They chose to highlight in a red box one statement, which they've attributed to me, and I'm a little nervous about it because it says, anyone who's served in the military is a veteran. And while I'm sure that I probably did say that in one way, shape or form, I'm sure it was also qualified with a, something following it up saying, however, not every government agency or nonprofit provides services to everybody who served in uniform and there's certain criteria. So, it's a little bit misleading. I think our newsletter will help straighten it out a little bit, but we may need to uh, see if uh, Mark will, you know, allow us to do some kind of a clarification or something. Uh, I would have thought that by now, anybody who's read it, because it's down yesterday at noon, uh, would have said something about that, unless they keep it, then go ahead and refer to the future. So I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad nobody's complained about it. I was expecting someone to call us up and say, hey, that's not right. <laughs> but apparently not. So either they don't read it closely enough or or they agree with it. So that's good. Okay, Chris, thank you very much for that. And I'm, I'm glad the, new, the uh, article stimulated a little bit of interest. Um, I'm going to skip over number six unless anybody has anything on that particular item. I have still not drafted the certificate, which I, I do intend to do. Um, if anybody else wants to do that, please raise your hand. And, and now I think it's time to talk about the uh, three communications we've had. We, we put service member support group on the agenda, but the other two, John Sands question and uh, Kyle McDonald's email uh, also should be responded to. Um, I thought it would be worth us opening it up to the group. Um, the, the question really is, I think, are, are we a group that would set up or sponsor some kind of a support group for service members and their families? And I'm really glad Ryan is on the call because Ryan, you're our only um, recent active duty service member. 
Um, I, I have a personal feeling about that, that it probably is not the role of the Veterans Commission to do that, that that should be the unit's responsibility to set up a support system for service members and their dependents. Uh, because my unit, when I was deployed, did that, and every other unit has a process for doing that. So if there's somebody in Weathersfield who does not, whose unit isn't doing that, I think the best we can do is help them reach out to their unit and say, hey, what's the support you're providing for these families? Um, but I don't know, what, what do you all think? When I got called up for the Bosnia campaign, uh, the unit really reached out to my family. Yeah. Uh, it, it was great, it was 20, 33 years ago. So that's the way it's supposed to work. And so uh, yeah, Doug, I would agree with you that it's not one, not the, the commission uh, responsible to do that. But two, we could somehow through a chain of command reach out to the unit to make sure that they're doing it. Right. I, I agree with that, um, especially with the, um, you know, we just had a, a unit leave out of Connecticut on deployment. And I'm pretty sure out of all of those members that just left, there's probably a wide number of them that don't have the support of family back on this side or, or a connection. Um, and they're just there with the brothers and our brothers and sisters in arms and they have no one connecting them here with their family. Um, like you said though, Doug, as far as the capacity for this commission to do something of that nature, um, that's kind of near and far for that one because uh, that, that's a that, that, that's a big that's that's ombuds, uh, ombudsman kind of stuff that you know, do we really have that capability to do something like that? We, we can barely get a newsletter out. So I don't <laughs> think we, we're not going to run a support group. <laughs> doesn't the Rocky Hill Veterans Center do something at all? They have support groups. Sorry, the Rocky Hill. The Vet Center has support groups for uh, families uh, after uh, being in the military. I don't know if they have them in the military. I know they have rap groups there uh, for veterans. I know they have rap groups there for families. I, I wanted to mention too, there's the Connecticut military support program. It's not necessarily like a sit down support. It's for uh, 24 seven assistance for free confidential counseling for military and their families, crisis intervention, marriage, family, stress, anxiety. So there is a support group of that nature. That's good, yeah. Well. Um, Another newsletter I, item. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think we need to be real clear that, and it, it occurred to me uh, when I read the, the Life article and the information in our own newsletter about who is a veteran, one of the things that we did not do as a new commission, we did not clearly define who we're serving. We said Weathersfield's veterans, but we didn't describe who that is. Um, and I'm not sure that it's our mission. I'm not trying to shirk responsibility, but I'm not sure it's our mission to serve currently serving soldiers, sailors, Marines, and so on, and their families. That is their unit's responsibility. Um, and they're, they're required to do that. Every one of them has a family support program. So the spouse who's not connected to the family support program, that unit commander has, has failed that spouse. Um, so we, we've got to help figure out how to connect them maybe, but that's the, I think the best we can do. So it, could it, is it possible that the unit she's talking about has or has this one that's set up in East Granby? Oh, that's where the unit is. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who the person is. So uh, okay. what do we know about the individual that contacted Kathy Bagley? Uh, just that she's a female and her husband is uh, currently serving and she is a Weathersfield resident and was just looking for um, a, a support group. And she found it yeah. in in uh, Granby, East Granby area. So in, in that capacity, so I don't think I know the, the background of it, but 
she was looking for a support group and she found one in East Granby? That's, oh. That is what the email said. That's what the email said. And she okay. was looking for something closer to home, but she is part of, I'm sorry, she is part of one Got in the Granby or East Granby. I, I, I threw in the word found, so I apologize for that. Because yeah, there, there are all the, the spousal support groups and whatnot that are spread throughout, but you're going to find more of that support when you're close to an active base, which would be the closest yeah. to Brian. So um, to find a support group closer in this area for that style of service is going to be kind of hard because not everyone is, you know, my wife, when I was active duty, fortunately I was home, but there really wasn't, other than the people within my unit, really wasn't a support group per se, unless you're down close to active duty base. All right. Uh, yeah. can, I make, can I make a suggestion? I would suggest maybe you email her uh, the uh, phone number or fax to the outreach center in Rocky Hill, and maybe they might have some uh, young wives that, that do have a group there, but maybe she can reach out to them, which is Rocky Hill is a lot closer than driving up to East Granby, and I'm thinking if it's in East Granby, it's probably being done up at the Air Guard base, if that's where it's being done. I mean, I'm not sure that's where it is, but I would assume that. Yeah, she did not give us an email. She only, uh, she called. So I will have to give her a call. I have her phone right. number. Uh, um, right. So. Okay. The other suggestion is to call her state representative again. And that's, that's what Amy's job is, you know, to help the citizens. And her office probably has better connections than any of us in terms of you know, serving um, constituents oh. yeah. so mary on that one are you are you the one who's going to call her back i will call her back uh, okay if that's okay yeah no that's great I, yeah. I think we've had a couple suggestions one from rick and then also the one that chris mentioned the connecticut military support program uh if she needs more help but i, I would also underscore the the fact that uh, she should be working through her spouse's unit of assignment. And, and that is where she should be looking for her support. Right. So her spouse's unit of assignment, is that what you? Yes. Who, yeah. whoever, whoever he is currently active duty deployed with or, or her, whatever, whoever her spouse is, um, whatever unit that that person is affiliated with, they have programs set up for spousal support that they should be utilizing. Yeah. Now, now there's a there's a chance because I've been one of those, you know, if her spouse is a army reservist or something like that, they could be deployed with a unit from California, right. in which case that unit commander isn't going to be able to help her very much. Right. Right. But the reserve you know, unit, three, sure. 3,000 miles away, but they are responsible to help spouses uh, that are attached to them find support close to their home. Okay. And just Mary, for your for for your, sometimes this situation um, you have to be careful with because the person on the line that may be calling you, you have to take it for what it is, but not for what it is 100% because you want to make sure that you're not diving into something that may be much bigger than what you're being called about. I don't want you to fall into a hole of spousal issues that just aren't handled on the unit side or the the, the, the two person side okay but just i'm just saying I keep it strictly those for, active duty, we know what i'm speaking of so i just want to make sure you know you don't okay. go too deep into that yeah okay I'll, yeah i'll keep it factual and that's about it yeah thank mary thank you for doing that if you need any assistance with calling that person or whatever, let me know, or, you know, one of us can help with that too. Uh, okay. I'd be glad to help too. Thank we, you, Chris. Uh, we do speak the language somewhat. <laughs> so, okay, very quickly, we got about, I think, five minutes. Oh, no, we got a little more than that. Uh, five or 10 minutes left. And we have uh, Kyle McDonald. And I don't remember, Mary, did can I ask if if, uh, if you're not speaking right now, could you please mute your telephone or your computer? Because I'm hearing my own voice like twice. I don't know where it's coming from. 
I just, I just muted Rick, who's on his phone. I'm sorry, Rick, and I will unmute you. Yeah, if you, need, if you need to be, but I think you were provide. There was a little background noise that was. That uh, might be it too. Out. Yeah, it's just it's it's hard to hear people when there's that kind of background noise. Um, with Kyle McDonald, uh, I'd be happy to answer him. I don't remember if you sent his email to us or or what, uh, Mary. I apologize, but. I, I can forward this to you. Um, That'd be great. And then I'll, I'll respond to him. Okay. And I did, he is on uh, the uh, needs assessment um, okay. right. list that you gave me. And he's actually on the assessor's list. Yeah. So, and, and I can, I'll ask him about his interest in serving on the okay. commission too. So you don't, because I, I feel like we're giving everything back to Mary and that was not, <laughs> that's, that's not very helpful to her. Um, and then John, to Doug. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> John Sand. Uh, we all love John Sand. Mr. Mm -hmm. Sand to you, Helen. Um, <laughs> um, I can't believe that. I can't believe they're not requiring U.S. history. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I don't know how to respond to him other than to invite him to come to a meeting and, and if he wants to explain it to us more fully. Uh, at a meeting. I could contact him if you want. I mean, I, we're still talking all the time and I have his email and, you know, we've been in coordinates for a long time. So I don't mind reaching out to him and either inviting him to come or if he sends me an email, I can forward it to the group. I could take care of that section of that. That'd be great. And, and maybe ask him to explain a little bit more. Uh, I had never heard of this curriculum change where U.S. history was no longer required. Um, but Connecticut's a funny state, so um, maybe that's true. I mean, what's the rationale for something like that? That just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I think that what it used to be is you needed to have X number of credits of history, and one of those had to be US history. Now it's probably just, yeah, you just need uh, you know four credits of history. But what and, other history is and, I, and that's stupid, but I'll just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I haven't read it and I, John will be able to provide us with more information on mm -hmm. exactly what the change is. But from, from what I'm reading, it's like, uh, that's the only thing that kind of makes sense to me, but it would be great to have him, Helen. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Helen. If, if you could get him to even explain it in an email that you could share with us or invite him to come to the next meeting. Um, I'll, I'll do both. I'll reach out and see what he says. And then I'll invite him to come, you know, to the next meeting. I'm sure he probably would if he's available. So that'd be good. Right. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, we, we made it through the agenda. We had a lot to talk about today. Um, board member comments. This is open season for the board members to share anything that didn't get discussed already. I just wanted to say I read that nice article with Frank and Doug on the cover of the Weathersfield Life, and it was really nice. I, I thought they did a great job. So you guys should give yourselves some credit. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you. That can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. And uh, Tricia, at the very beginning of the meeting, I, I did uh, welcome the new members. I'm sorry you missed the welcome, but uh, I do want to reiterate that uh, we're thrilled to have you as a permanent member of the commission and uh, hope that maybe at the next meeting we'll be able to see your face. Uh, I hope, do you have a computer that you can log in with? Yes, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for the welcome. We're, we're very happy to have you and uh, someday we'll get back to meeting in person again. And uh, that'll be even more fun. So, uh, any other board member comments? Yeah, this is this is comments? Rick. I was unmuted. I just got put back into the meeting. Uh, I have a request. I'm having problems with my eye. It's very hard for me to read uh, communications on my cell phone. And I thought I had sent Mary an email asking if I could have a final draft of the newsletter sent to me on a hard copy. If that could be provided to me, I would appreciate it. I can definitely do that. Uh, 
would would you like in a, in addition to the one that you're going to receive as a uh, yeah I, w I would because everybody's read it and I haven't had a chance okay. to read it okay know. I can definitely do that for you Rick all right yeah thanks Rick I, I thought everyone then, had the, seen it and the comment of of not doing U.S. history uh, I think is insulting because half of the people on this board have experienced U.S. history and we are a part of our country's history. That's my personal comment. I really concur on that. I have some ideas, but I'd like to hear what uh, the, the yeah. teacher has to say before I backfill with some ideas that I have. So, yeah, Helen, I think that if, if, we, if he could really speak, we would we would all learn from what's going on. Absolutely, yeah. And as I understand the state curriculum, the municipalities have a lot of latitude in how they implement the state curriculum. So, you know, the town of Wethersfield Board of Education doesn't have to do exactly what the state says and they, they can establish their own internal curriculum requirements. So, yeah. not that uh, I still always wonder what our role will this in this would be if we uh, decide that it's a terrible thing and, and do, we, do we go before the Board of Ed as a commission and, and lobby for a change? I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> Write a nice letter to them or something uh, more. I, I, I don't want to start a petition. I, I'm sure there's a guest speaker for my uh, my daughters and my uh, my even my grandson's middle school and talking to them on, on a Memorial Day or Veterans Day in kind of very casual way. Uh, it's not trying to recruit, you know, sixth graders into the Army, but just talking about some of the things that, you know, the, the, the military has to do with the history of the country. Uh, country. And it's been actually very well received. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. I would offer up if we get that far. Right, right. Yeah, although shame on you for not recruiting sixth graders, Frank. I, I do that all the time. I think it's time well spent, you know. <laughs> it's a great career path, right, Ryan? Okay. All right, so I guess we, we've exhausted all the board member comments. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Mary, anything else we need to know about before we pull the plug? I think we're good. Thank you, everybody. Great. Well, thank you all once again. Welcome again, Frank and Tricia, back to the commission. And uh, we, uh, I'll send out a little note like I usually do with follow-ups, just as a reminder to people. But um, we'll see you all next month. Okay. We are adjourned. Bye. Uh -oh. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Chris.